James Day, public television pioneer and chairman of the CUNY TV Advisory Board, passed away in April 2008. His legacy includes the series Day at Night, which aired for 130 episodes beginning in 1973. The program features interviews with many of the great thinkers and achievers of the 20th century. These 30-year-old programs have been restored. The interviews remain fresh and relevant today, exploring issues that are still important to society. Showing them again is CUNY TV's tribute to Jim and his contributions to public television. Marty Lynx is a cartoonist whose syndicated comic strip, Emmy Lou, has cataloged the foibles of the adolescent set through several generations of readers, to say nothing of the countless switches and fashions and fads. The fact that her cartoon strip was once known as Bobby Socks makes the point, at least to those old enough to remember when young people wore that label and socks. Her role as the Boswell of the awkward years comes naturally. She's not only an artist, she's also a mother and has seen four youngsters of her own safely through the pleasures and pains of adolescence. In addition to appearing in comic strips around the country, Emmy Lou has also made her appearance in book form. Her creator and putative mother, Marty Lynx, doesn't limit herself to the cartoonist crayon, however, she's also well known for her fine art. Marty, do you make any attempt to keep up with young people today? Oh, yeah. Do you reflect? How do you do it? Well, I'm, uh, I have young people around me all the time. I have um, a son and two daughters in their early 20s. I said in the introduction you had four children. I guess I must have included Emmy, Emmy Lou in Lou. that. Yes, there, there she are, is an extra there child. There are three, three children. Mm -hmm. But I, I go through... Um, magazines. Now I'm going in a different direction. I'm getting you? interested in MS, Ms, mm -hmm. and uh, Women's Lib has been sending me a lot of, of um, literature which I'm interested How in. How will that reflect itself in a, in a cartoon about uh, well, young people? Well, for instance, I wrote a gag the other day of um, Dad was doing the dishes and Emmy Lou was helping him and the mother was in the back room sitting on the floor and the father said, little did I think that I'd ever lived to see the day that I'd be doing the dishes while your mother was meditating. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I did a few other gags and I'm sure my syndicate's going to turn down. I'm waiting to hear well, from Why them. would they turn them down? Well, um, of course, Emmy Lou is supposed to be about 14 years old. Yeah. But she, um, she's read by all ages, and as I'm getting older, I'm thinking more as of the mother's and parents' side, too. So you, you, you tend to warm But kids are, I mean, we were just speaking mm. of our children. Mm. I mean, um, they're different than when we were Absolutely. young. I mean... And a 14-year-old today is not the same as a 14-year-old no, was when you and they, I were 14. Oh, no. <laughs> Do, does Emmy Lou reflect something of I, yourself I, as a 14-year-old, or is yes, that, is that, it does? Yes, so you, you, and it does, mm -hmm. and I would, but I'm growing up too. I mean, I'm, my mind is expanding because everything you read mm -hmm. makes your mind expand, mm -hmm. and I never close my mind to anything, and I'm interested in everything they say about metaphysics and, um, Esalen, I'm going to a psychic, uh, mm -hmm. or I'm going to, I'm, go I'm making an appointment to, mm -hmm. I like to just see what's going on in the world and everything you do is reflected. It is reflected in your, in, in in your, your art, uh -huh. yes. I have to keep up in the change of furniture too. Um, now I draw lots of plants. <laughs> mm. You know there's so many plants yes. around. And I draw lots of plants in my furniture. I don't even think that no people notice those things, but that is what I have to do. Mm -hmm. 
To what extent does it reflect what you know here in San Francisco? Because the West Coast and the East Coast, I gather, culturally are somewhat different than the rest of the country yes. with respect to, to the fads yes. of teenagers. Yes. Of course, that's what you know, I suppose. I know. It's the, just, yeah. I think San Francisco is so much more free mm -hmm. than, um, for instance, one gag I, I did that I just sent in this week. Um, I talked to my boss in the Chronicle, Stan Arnold, the feature editor, and he said, well, the Chronicle would run it. I told him the gag, and he says, but your syndicate won't run mm -hmm. it. But I sent it in it anyway. What's I, the gag? Can you tell me? Um, Emmy Lou says to her father, um, Daddy, would you mind if I had tons of children when I grew up and never get married? Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know. What, do you uh, get do you get a response from your from your readers as well as from your your, yeah. your syndicate? What kind of response do you get? Well, I've been getting um, well, mostly people write in for autographs yeah. and and uh, does that please drawings. you? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. It's hard to believe. I work at home, mm -hmm. and it's hard to believe that when I sit home and draw, and put something in the mail that somewhere out there is going to see it mm -hmm. about three weeks later or three months later yeah. on the Sundays. And I never think of it, mm -hmm. you know. I just look at it myself in the paper and sometimes I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, what was I thinking? I must have been on the phone when I wrote that or... So it does reflect, in a sense, I suppose, yes. your own state of mind at the time yes, you I was do wondering it. When I was <laughs> confused but or whatever. But I've been getting letters from um, women's livers and that's what really started me looking into a lot Encouraging of things. Encouraging you? Yes. Condemning you? or Very, Quite vitriolic they are. In, in some cases because my middle class values, <laughs> <laughs> I was, um, I was uh, because of the media in which I work, I was um, furthering the old idea that the girls wait by the phone for the boys to call mm -hmm. and um, that this is an image they're trying to get away from. But my, my idea was that I've seen, not only did I do it as a teenager, I saw my daughters do it, you know, which was only a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, one is only 20 now. And uh, that always will exist, I think, and I, I guess I, I think. But they felt that I was furthering this bad image. and. Um, when I looked over Emmy Lou, I, I felt that a new world is coming, and if I could uh, enter into it, mm -hmm. um, I would like that because after reading the material, and, and I, uh, I'm a compulsive reader anyway, Are you? yes, mm -hmm. of everything you can mm -hmm. think of, and. Um, you would do this whether you were a cartoonist yes, or not. Yes, yeah, I love to read. Because I wondered whether having to turn out a cartoon regularly, if you don't find yourself going dry from time to time for ideas, every and day. almost desperately looking. Every day. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> every day. Do you get help? Yes, mm -hmm. I work on gags and situations and that sort of thing. I have um, some help from. Uh, a gag writer. I do the Sundays entirely myself and half for years, and they're the hardest because they're a whole story, mm -hmm. and they have to have a gag line, and you, you can't have the gag line given away in the Until first the last, story, last and then the whole top row is dropped in some papers. So that I have to, yeah, it's just it's like a, a soap filler. opera. If you've missed the first yeah. episode, why? Well, you I have, have to start the real story in the second hmm. panel, in the second row, mm -hmm. and so I just fill up the first row. And like in the Chronicle here, um, one of the middle pictures is dropped entirely in, in order to make the tabloid size. Mm -hmm. So I have to think of something that fits in with the story, and yet if it's dropped. It doesn't matter. That must be rather complicated. And sometimes it ends up. <laughs> yes, it is. Sometimes it ends up. It seems to me when I see that I've dropped the gag too. <laughs> the daily is just a single uh, gag line yeah. then, and, and, the, and the cartoon. The, yeah. I said again in introducing you that the pro that the strip was formerly known as Bobby Socks. It's still known as Bobby Socks. Is that right? In Here some... in San Francisco, it's Emmy Lou everywhere else. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And uh, of course. 
bobby socks don't exist anymore, do they? No. I mean, do people know what bobby socks are? Oh, I, I think so. And especially now with the sort of a nostalgia thing coming back, I, I feel it has a certain charm uh -huh. to it. I sort of like the idea. When was Bobby Sox born? How old is Emmy Lou? Emmy Lou is, she's about 14. Uh, she doesn't quite drive. It's hard for her to get a job. What I meant she's, was, how long has she been 14? Oh, how long has she, oh gosh. <laughs> At least 23 years is that, that I can think of, yeah. You were never tempted to let her grow not if I wanted 14. to lose my job. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, and the humor, humor is humor. It really doesn't change. But times do change. What, mm. what you're allowed to do and say now, I think, changes a great deal. Is this an advantage to you, even dealing with uh, an adolescent? Mm, it, it, no, it's harder, I would it say, is because, as you know, having you, you raised mm -hmm. children yourself, mm -hmm. you've been through, I guess, all the things I've been through mm -hmm. and all my friends have been through, and um, I can't really depict some of the things I'd like to on Emmy Lou. You just can't be realistic enough? Then, no, like Doonesbury can get away, for instance, mm -hmm. with doing a lot of things that doesn't fit in with my work. When they were, I remember when they were bombing North Vietnam, mm -hmm. I felt very, I was very upset over that. And I- Couldn't I, reflect this in the No, end. I thought of a gag for it. Mm -hmm. And um, I couldn't use it. I mean, I was told that my work, I'm not in the political field, I'm not an editorial cartoonist, mm -hmm. so I just dumped the gag. Mm -hmm. So I am very limited in, in what you can do, and then I'm limited to a 14-year-old with her parents, mm -hmm. and um, how did your old youngster, your own youngsters, feel about this when they were around this age? Did they feel that maybe mother was using their real-life situations? Yeah, they and loved it. Did, but they liked it, though. Yeah. Uh, did they yeah my kids are adorable. Uh, did yeah. they recognize themselves? They recognize themselves, and then. The kids would come over, and I'd, I'd love their outfits, and I'd say, will you stand still a minute and let me draw it? And uh, there was a period when every, everyone would come to our house, and they'd all change clothes before they'd go off to school. They'd, they'd exchange with the other. And I was sitting in my studio once, and I looked out the window, and there was one of my daughter's friends walking down the street in an outfit I hadn't even had on yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, lots of things have happened uh -huh. that I've been able to use as gags. And uh, I go through magazines, and my reading does help me a lot, mm -hmm. yes. I think it Marty, what about your own adolescence? It was here in, in San Francisco, yes. I suppose. Does it, uh, you, you said earlier, it reflects itself inevitably. We all yes. reflect our own lives, yes, I suppose, yes. and what we do in our work. And how but, we feel inside mm. can't help coming out in what yeah. you do. Did you enjoy your adolescence or was yeah. it painful when you really enjoyed it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You grew up here in the Bay Area, yes, I suppose. Yes, I went to Lowell. That was uh, the high school that prepared was to prepare you for college, was it not? I never got to college. We mm. couldn't afford it. <laughs> oh, really? Did you grow up in a family of limited means? Uh, yes. Where did the interest in the art begin? I've been drawing ever since I can remember. Um, and um, I, um, it never occurred to me that I, I wouldn't draw. I mean, you, you were those who sat, one of those who sat in class and drew cartoons, yes. as so many young people yeah. do, I suppose. When did it yeah. begin to work into something professionally? From almost the time I graduated from high school, I guess, since, I guess I've been, I've been one of the lucky artists. I've been earning a living drawing since I've been 19 years old. Did you, a long time did ago. you study art? I went to sort of a combination art charm school for six months. <laughs> I didn't learn the charm and I didn't learn the art. <laughs> I flunked both. Mm -hmm. um, 
Cartooning is something you can't learn. It is? No. It's, it's a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. um, that comes from, from yes. living, I suppose. Yes. Mm -hmm. I wish I would Did have your parents art. have a great sense of humor? Did you grow up in a home? Or? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my husband, I met my husband when I was very young. I just had started high school. And he had a fabulous sense of humor. He's a descendant of the first governor of California, you were he telling was, me. He was. He yeah. was. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so and my very... children are the last living direct descendants of the, not only the first governor, but the Alcalde of, mm -hmm. of before it became California. Mm -hmm. This is Arguello, Arguello, which is your, your married name, of mm -hmm. course. When uh, did you sell your first cartoon? To the Chronicle when I was about 19 years old, I guess. Did it have a theme? Did, what, was they it the beginning? Just, no. Um, I, I had written them a letter enclosing my drawings. And um, they called me and asked me to come down. And they gave me a whole page of my own. It was very exciting. Mm. And um, I had wanted to be a fashion artist. and. Um, I had, there had been a vacancy at the examiner in those days. They had people drawing instead of the, using photographs mm -hmm. like they do now. And the newspapers used to have on their staff an artist. And I was very small and I, I, I looked young. And you still they, do. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Uh, I, they liked my work. And then when I went down for a personal interview, they said, no one that looks like you could possibly fill this job. And I remember I cried all the way home. Um, and uh, then I went to the Chronicle and had a weekly drawing for many years. And then... What was it? Was it, was it a Bobby Sox yes, drawing? So yeah. that, that's the name has come from yes. the very first time that yes. you drew. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, Do you know why you chose to draw? Emmy, why, Emmy yes, I had a next door neighbor with that name, and that name was really, I always, I thought, had a sort charm. Sort of prototypical. Yeah, uh, it's ageless. Uh, but do you know why you chose to do a teenage drawing? Because you were uh, you were a teenager, I suppose, at, but you were yes, still 19? Yes, yes. Uh, um, rather than... Uh, it I, was just at that time that teenagers started to sort of come into their own. Now I think it's more college humor has sort of overtaken the teenage. Or maybe the teenagers have grown a little older. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just started drawing them. That's the way them. it started, yes. and that's the way it's been since. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I, I, when I was a young child, I used to lay on the floor and draw all the, all the comics. Um, Did you have uh, models in those days, yes. uh, people that, that you looked up to in the comics? Yes, of course. <laughs> Who were they? Well, um, I love them all. Ella Cinders, Tilly the Toiler. <laughs> yes. Do you remember those? Oh, yes, I recall them. I don't know how many I think will. some of them are still running. Yes, I suppose. Maggie and Jigs is still running. Mm -hmm. um, the Gumps. The Cats remember. and Jammer Kids. Cats and Jammer Kids. Mm -hmm. I think they're still running somewhere. I met the man who drew, he wrote to me once and came out to see me a few years ago. Um, the man who draws Henry, remember the little one that never oh, yes. says anything? Yes. Well, he's not the originator, mm -hmm. but it's gone down to... Uh, Do cartoonists get together at all? Well, yes. I know Sparky Schultz very well. He's a very good friend of mine. But you, do, you don't have an association where... There's a uh, national cartoonist mm, society. But you're not active in that. I, I, I would not judge. at all. Words, you don't find it any compulsion to get together with other cartoonists and talk about your problems as lawyers or doctors would, for no. example. Mm -hmm. No. There's not really any problems mm -hmm. to discuss. Mm -hmm. You just send your work in and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, with when I'm with Sparky and I see his work... Is this Charlie Schultz? Charles Schultz. Those, those, those peanuts. I yeah. didn't recognize the yes, Sparky. Yes, I'm so that. used to calling him. Uh, I never his, heard it. That is his, I mean, what he <laughs> is called. Um, I'm so lost in admiration, I guess, of his genius that 
I just stand there and not even think of cartooning and mm -hmm. in reference to myself, I'm just admiring the works. Do you read the comics the yourself? Oh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll keep up. Mm -hmm. I like to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. I like, um, I have um, certain one. I think Doonesbury is very clever, very, you know, very new. Mm -hmm. I don't think cartoonists are cartoonists in the old sense. Um, what is the old sense? Well, the drawing is secondary now. Uh, I mean, like, um, I mean, my 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 figures are so identif identifiable. Mm -hmm. Andy Gump or Tilly the Toiler, like uh, Apartment B or G. What is Apartment G? That runs. It's almost like a, a commercial drawing. Uh, some of the cartoonists, like Dennis the Menace, they're are several cartoonists doing that. Mm -hmm. And they have evolved almost a Disney-like style that they can tr train somebody else to do. You've never trained anyone else to do No, Emmy, no, because mm -hmm. um, somebody could copy them. Mm -hmm. But to think but of you something work alone. new. Yes, you work yes. alone. You don't have others that work with you to, to help you out. Uh, do, do you work regular hours? Do you no, set aside hours? You don't? I work hard one day, like I, for instance, I knew this week would be a busy week, and I, I really worked hard Monday and Friday. I'll work really hard to make up for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then I'll work in the weekends a lot of times so that I'll have free time during the week. When you sit down before your board to work hard, uh, it requires not just the drawing. It requires a tremendous amount of thinking with respect to gag situations. Do you have a, a kind of inventory of these that you draw on when you sit yes, down? Yes, I, I have, uh, I work with um, a man called Jerry Bunsen mm -hmm. and uh, I'll look over his gags and then if I don't use those I'll sit and I'll know, say just I, I can only use three and I need three more gags mm -hmm. so I'll sit and Think of mm -hmm. three more gags. I'll go through. Math. How do you do it? Can you can you can you uh, maybe it's impossible to demonstrate? But when when you have a gag, how do you begin to draw? Where do you where do you know where to start when you've oh, got a gag? Well, I draw. I have a picture in my mind mm -hmm. of a whole. What it is actually is all I'm doing is taking my hand and drawing out a picture that I have up here, mm -hmm. and I have a picture of a whole room with the mother and the father and Emmy Lou sitting there. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is illustrating that room. For instance, I'll start drawing mother standing here, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm doing this awfully fast. I really do it a little more carefully than that, okay? <laughs> and here's dad, he's reading the paper. Mm -hmm. And here's Emmy Lou walking through the door over here, like. Mm -hmm. Then I have a, a square cut out. And I've drawn a plant here, hanging in a bureau here. And you have to think of composition. It's just like doing any of, I paint as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And I, you still have to, you can't have two, you have to have a line going this way to balance this. You need something over here to balance this. You need a pattern here to balance the mm -hmm. black over here. You, it's, so it's there, not at random, there is a, a design uh, uh, You in, have to, to mm -hmm. there has to be, composition in everything. And so I have this cut out thing. It's a piece of cardboard and this is open. And I've drawn this whole thing and I'll lift this car cardboard and I'll just, whoop, I'll just fit it over. To frame it. To frame it. How, it, mm -hmm. what makes the, be how it fits in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I see. And then underneath I, I finish it, I ink it in and, um, I have a background artist that does my balloons on Sunday, mm -hmm. and he does the outline of the door, mm -hmm. for instance. As I remember, uh, Marty, when uh, Bobby Socks, when I first started reading Bobby Socks, Emmy Lou was just one character, wasn't she? That is, she was, was she always the dominant character yes. in, in Bobby yes. Socks? But there were other characters as There's well. There's Taffy. Mm -hmm. Do you, shall I draw? Sure, paper? draw. There's Taffy. I don't want to.
And these characters have remained in all through the yes. 23 years or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A taffy sort of loser. And this represents me a, too. <laughs> represents you. <laughs> Well, I guess there's all, all of us have a little of the loser. A little, a little of the loser in all yes. of us, yes. And enjoy it. <laughs> Same thing. And then here's the, they're all basically, there's nothing to it. I mean, mm -hmm. I could teach you in two minutes how to do it. <laughs> they're all basically the same. Mm -hmm. Like Schultz says, all you do is draw round circles and you're in business. <laughs> That's mother. That's mother. mother. Would you like to go back and relive your own teenage years? No. I, I wish I was young. I would like the age. Mm -hmm. But I think that what the kids are doing now are the way the kids live now, I think they're leading a much more fascinating life than we did. I mean, they they travel together, they go to Europe. I mean, to go to Europe when I was a young girl, you had to be go with your parents and be very wealthy or you were sent to a school. And I mean, my daughter's traveling all over Europe on mm -hmm. about $7 a day. And do you, uh, do you think that the freedom that they have doesn't carry with it maybe even heavier burdens than you and I may have had living in a more disciplined kind of society? Do you, do you find this in your own youngsters? Do they seem to be I, f I think they're much more mature and responsible because mm -hmm. they take in so much more of the world. It's made them grow up a lot more. Mm -hmm. They see so much more of the world than I ever did. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't travel and not, not realize that there's a lot of people out there. <laughs> yes. Mm. And traveling, I gather, is one of the things that you love to do. Does I paint wherever I go. Yeah. Does which having, is having to, to meet deadlines yeah, 52 that's terrible. Years, I've it? been working nearly a year because I want to go on a trip this year. So you have to kind of push and get ahead yeah. to get away. Yeah. That's mm. the worst part. There's always the mm. deadline. Will you write forever? Will you do it forever? I guess so. <laughs> it <laughs> looks hope. like I'm going to. I hope so. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, Jim. <laughs>